Hello and welcome everyone to the Warhammer Meta Chasers. This is your weekly rundown of the biggest and best tournaments coming up in Warhammer 40,000 over the course of the next weekend. My name is Paul, your host, and I'm joined by the mogul Dustin Hinshaw. Hello everybody. Unfortunately, Adam is not able to join us today because he is still traveling the world and recovering from Adepticon. The awesome coverage, and in case you missed it, how could you miss it? Go back and watch it. We're covered by the, the wonderful Paul here and Adam. It's great coverage as always. Great event. Everything looked great. Did you have fun there, Paul? You look like you guys. I had a blast. Absolutely yeah. had a blast. Like being there, you know, in the middle of all those uh, war gamers and hobbyists and just the enthusiasm that is Adepticon. Adepticon um, is like one on of the, the better um, events, but not, not, not just like tournaments, but I mean like uh, conventions. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. One of the better conventions yeah. for this. I'm, the close, in my opinion, closest thing that we have to a convention in yeah. our thing. And you'll hear me say that over again, but there were uh, there were over 8,000 people there. <laughs> like 8,000. 8, cool. <laughs> zero 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 people like, <laughs> that is a lot of people that's eight <laughs> lvos of uh 40k right <laughs> uh, well in, in 40k it was still you know what you might consider the supersized tournaments and of course the of team course. event is you know you know hundreds of players and then the singles event hundreds of players and you know as you can imagine there is the knock on but there are also a sigmar you know underworlds kill teams like all you name it it was there uh great representation and also got to have some yummy yummy uh chicago hot dogs oh, uh, i got to go to kuma's get some burgers they did a promotion it was absolutely awesome and got to see some lovely folks that were fans of the show so if you did stop by and say hello i uh, really appreciate it like it means a lot to hear people you know appreciate the work that we do and yeah just that. just had a blast we do this for you guys so we appreciate that you appreciate it <laughs> yeah yep and look we're doing this live right now if you're listening to us after the fact we do this live each and every thursday apologize for last thursday but you know I just said where, you know, where we were <laughs> yes. uh, and have some great folks in the chat. Uh, some of the folks are even going to be at the events that we're talking about, but let's jump right into it. We have two great events to talk about GothCon and wet coast GT, the wet coast GT. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second, figure out where is the wet coast. Uh, I want to give an event shout out though, to the Pariah Nexus tournament in Tokyo, Japan, awesome. 32 players registered three round event love to see these uh you know i know they have an active circuit over there and you know even saw players you know interact with other events but it's just kind of cool to see events happening where we had not looked and found them before mm -hmm. absolutely I, I don't know if we actually featured a, a tournament from japan on the show before so that's awesome to actually see that we've seen them from korea we've seen them from uh china actually popping up I don't think we've done Japan yet, so that's awesome. Now we got we're 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 making the Asian tour now. This is great. We love seeing all these tournaments. Well, these I mean these all tournament scenes start from somewhere, right? It starts from someone Definitely. deciding yep. to run an event and do something for their players in their area, and it's kind of never been easier because we have, you know, kind of an accepted mission format. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you know a couple of different terrain formats that are commonly accepted across basically all all formats and that play really well with the mission. So you can kind of create a predictable experience for people in your area. And if no one is running tournaments, probably waiting for someone to start doing it. It's true. It's true. That's actually a really good point that this is one of the more uh, universal rules accepted like for th this edition in terms of getting into Warhammer and playing Warhammer. So if you get into it somewhere, chances are wherever you go in your area, it'll all be played relatively the same, if not identical, which is great. This is, that's why we're seeing this. It's growing a lot more than we've seen in the past years, which obviously as hobbyists ourselves in the hobby that's what we want to see that this is we want this to grow and grow and grow uh the uh joe from war games live is chilling out before the alpine cup next weekend so if you Great haven't joe, already sure. kind of like notified yourself of when his channel goes live go over to youtube and check him out uh always you know love joe's coverage and running into joe at these events as well getting into GothCon. um I, you know, it's, it's from Gothenburg, Sweden in Scandinavia, which is absolutely awesome. We know there's just like great players there, great love of the game in that area. But, you know, GothCon, I kind of want them all imagine them, you know, wearing like cloaks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe a lot of brocade waistcoats and that Ooh, kind of stuff. Is this, is this one of those ones you have to dress up for? Like, it's kind of like, like a grand narrative. Wait, top hat. Where'd that come from? I, <laughs> what Steam, steampunk still happening i don't i don't know oh, I mean, was, is this goth steampunk is that what that is is that what we discovered so when when goths discover the color brown that is when it turns into steampunk. oh i see yeah. okay that makes that's sense. the line that is that is uh 
perfect perfect way to describe it i now fully understand thank you paul i love both those fandoms by the way <laughs> and all the cool stuff have certainly dabbled in all of it but i i say it when all sincerity you know i had something else in my mind other than of course the name of the city you know, when, uh, <laughs> um, when i was when i saw gothcon but it's 64 players six round event um 64 players let's see if the better shakes out like we're going to expect it all right, what's the better look like here? So we got the Imperial Super Faction. There are four Sister Battle, three Custodes, one Admech, seven Astro Militarum, four Grey Knights, one Imperial Knight, Space Marines, there's three Adepts and Stardies, two Blood Angels, and two Black Templar, Chaos, there's two Chaos Space Marines, four T Suns, three Death Guard, one World Leader, and two Chaos Knights. Xenos, there's eight Necrons, two Orcs, four Tau, and one Voten. There is not a single Hive Mind faction of either flavor anywhere to be seen here what get is over there show my it's done man you gotta Come on, get over they, there are they not in the goth scene is it is it tyrannies and jesus are called i think jesus are called fit perfectly into that perfect yeah, one of the things we should do um on either our patreon page or in the in the after show if we find time to put it in this show is like put up a list we think could perform for some of these uh unrepresented factions Let's think about doing that. And I don't want to, I'm not putting you on the spot right now, but I know you've got some tech, um, you know, as a faction specialist that we could probably share with folks and oh, try to absolutely. figure out the best way to I, do it. I will so. happily do that. That's a great idea. This, this is this is what we do this for. I love that. Great idea. <laughs> Somebody write that down. Somebody write that down. Or uh, hopefully we'll remember it tomorrow. We'll put something <laughs> we'll in our Discord. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it is a holiday, man. I don't know. I, my short term memory is pretty. It cuts off at about twelve o'clock tonight. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, and one then of the I'll, things. <laughs> Oh. When when the meta is solved, quote unquote solved, which we know it's not. We know it's like no. there's there's things moving around, and, and we're talking. Uh, did you even? We didn't mention the faction podium yet. No, I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, sorry. I, yeah. I, sorry, I still have. I, there's, I still yes, hive mind. Oh, I jumped in. Sorry, it's chaos. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, hive mind. Nobody. Eldari though. There is three Eldari and five Drukari. The Drukari outnumber Eldari here. This is crazy. So that means. The faction podium is Necrons topping it off with eight. No real surprise there. Astro Militarum and second with seven. That's crazy. But, but, Drukari <laughs> podiums here with five in third place. That, I don't think we've seen Drukari podium. I don't think, what do you think has caused that? Do you think that the, um, you know, that new detachment has finally caught on and folks might have had a little bit of hobby lag to get them back into it. I, I mean, but I, I feel like Drakari players have been waiting for this. They um, have. There was there was some mixed feelings when that came up because a lot of like, they were obviously really excited at first because, oh my God, we got something new. We got to try this out. And it has a lot of cool tools. And I think it's actually one of these things that not necessarily hobby lag because most of the things that you would bring in a list like that for Drakari, most Drakari players, if not all of them, would already have access to completely fully painted and ready to go. It's just a matter of it's not a plug and play system. Like you need to practice that list. It is very it, it is it is a knife's edge. Like you have to play on a knife's edge because Drakari are still very, very flimsy in terms of their yeah. durability. But they I mean, hit three so with hard. not that much of a save. Yeah, I mean, like... yeah, exactly. So that's why you need to actually take advantage of all these, like the ability to fight first and just kill stuff, or and then get back into your transport without them fighting back. There's so many things now that you can do, but you have to position properly. You have to go in at the right time. You have to get out at the right time. And so it's a really good detachment for them that gives them a lot of tools that they need, but it's not easy to use. So maybe it's just people taking the time to figure it out. Oh, See what they're gonna well, let's in. look at this in the chat right now. Of course, uh, KR says uh, the custodes are are real like tough right now, but they're not as maybe as fun to play as as maybe they would expect. Um, and in this meta, uh, the, we're also seeing that you know there aren't many at this event. Uh, but then the Ultimper Fireblade says Dark Eldar can't deal with custodes. So you know maybe the fact that there are fewer custodes represented has caused more Dr Drakari to come out. That's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah, they. I think custodies are probably one of the hardest matches for the Drukari because a lot of their firepower, not their firepower, a lot of their power comes from their close combat. And it is so, it's swinging into, into custodes. Plus, custodes can fight first against them. And again, we just discussed they do not like getting hit. So if they don't get yeah. the hit before they get hit, they're dead. So yeah, it is actually you a know, really the, rough matchup for them. The fights first is, is what is basically what's doing. And because, yeah. you know, we find ourselves, you know, the way you play the game now is not necessarily a bunch of assaults. It is one combat at a time. And if that, if that hard as nails unit can use all of its tricks, yeah, uh, then 
you know, you got to find different ways. Yeah, and exactly. It's real difficult I mean, to do what, it. But what you're saying, like, it, it, you do have to focus on one of them because even with Rukari, if you go multiple places, then okay, they use all the tricks here, but then interrupt over here. Yeah. So you're still not getting your fight to, to fight there. It's it's rough for them. Like you have to worry about or rely on shooting, and even then, ugh, the shooting isn't isn't great. They have some good shots, but not nearly enough quality to deal with Gusto. Oh, for sure. Even Ravagers going in to cover, you know, on a two plus yeah. armor save can be you know you're given you're given saves where other armies wouldn't do it. So I do actually think that is a bit of a of, of a rough matchup for, for them. Sure. So well sure. well spotted and well mentioned, but also well pointed out that there aren't a lot of custodes here, and these are some. Uh, of, in my opinion, in my experience, um, some of the best, best players in the world in this area. So mm -hmm. I am kind of keen to see what they have chosen here and how it shakes out. Uh, do we have a couple of lists we can run down? We actually have a Drukari list that we're going to be running down. So okay, look into this. Hey, they podium. They deserve this spot. So let's have a look and see what the actual Sky Splinter, Sky Splinter Assault list looks like over in Sweden right now. So do you want to go over it? Uh, yeah, we got Lilith here, two Archons, a uh, woman with a Nightmare Shroud, two by ten Catalytes, five Racks, ten Witches, ten five five Incubi. And actually, we were talking about, you know, how how fragile the army was. The Incubi give you a little bit of resistance to that. But, you know, you are still dealing with, dealing with Toughness 3 and not a lot of wounds. So, you know, you still got to be careful with them. Got to use them like a scalpel. Mm -hmm. um, I think is the way to do it. Two by five Mandrakes, two by five Scourges, which we have seen on the rise. Oh yeah, just with a lot of brutal firepower and and quickness. Free, Kronos, free fire and fade. So I mean, yeah, that's the quickness I was talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. uh, Kronos, two Talos, two Raiders, and four Venom. So mountain up, and yeah, that that's a list. There's a lot of stuff, which is what we know Jukari list to be represented by is a ton of things on the table. Yeah, I think we're going to start to see a little more Talos showing in the list too. Even though they're not really benefiting anything from the Sky Splitter Assault, they are still the easily the most durable unit that Dark Elder have access to. Plus, I'm assuming they're going to be equipped with Haywire because there's a lot of vehicles in the game right now and Twin Link Haywire. Turns out it's pretty good when you uh, get a couple more, like what, three to six? I think you can get a max of 12 mortal wounds <laughs> just because you Twin Link re-rolling for us. It's great. Like It's actually really effective. Plus, again, they're durable and it kind of takes away some of the firepower from your Raiders and Venoms, which are, are more important to your scoring objectives. Now, Lilith is the tech piece here that you're going to sort of see a lot more as your card. Yeah, what does Lilith do now? Fight first. She gives the witches oh. fight first. <laughs> and okay. she, is, well, that's... she is an infantry blender as well, but yeah, the fight first is a big thing for her. I, you know, I haven't seen her really. No, in this, uh, I would she, edition. I, because a lot of people, they haven't been running witches. Because again, without the Sky Splinter stuff, witches were just, they were not viable. But now mm. they can get a Lance coming out of there. They can get an extra AP with a, the pain token and fight first with Lilith. And again, with Lilith doing all, she's like anti infantry two plus or three plus or something. And she has like eight yeah. all attacks. Just going to go and check. Oh, her you got her right now. Abilities here. Yeah. The, the brides of death, while this model is leading a unit, models in that unit have the fight first ability. And each mm -hmm. time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to the strength characteristic of that attack and improve the armor right. penetration of that attack by one. So, right. There we go. Anti edgy custode right. tech right there. Yeah. Thrilly. Thrilling spectacle. Once per battle at the start of the fight phase, this model can use its ability. When it does, until the end of the phase, the attack characteristic of Lilith's blades is increased to 12. Mm -hmm. uh, and this model's invulnerable save is increased to 3 plus. There it is. So the anti anti custode tech right there, because that gives them plus one strength, which brings them up to wounding on fives. Well, fours with the plus one to wound because the lance instead of sixes, because they're strength three naturally, the witches, I believe. So that actually makes the math all way better. In your favor, plus you're fighting first, and again, little fighting, anti with an, plus, she has infantry so. anti infantry two plus and yeah. sustained hits two that's sustained as well. Hits that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. That that's the tech they needed. Go in, kill something, get out. Then you just kind of hope they don't want enough for us. <laughs> oh my goodness! Only one damage though. What damage yeah. one? So it, which is, that is it's, that's actually okay to things like custodes when they have minus one damage strats. So that means you don't have to worry about that minus one damage. Even you're not getting any less value. It's just volume, and it is pure volume. So that's what you want. I I, that, that's where you're going to see that more of that. Pal from Pain starts to stack on that too. It you does. Know, so yep. You know, maybe maybe so they're onto something they're, they're here. Minimum AP two on the witches at that point. Strike four AP two. Uh, I don't mind that. Uh, you know, I think that there's some some comments that maybe could be made about the composition of some of the vehicles here, and maybe you know, but we are seeing more Chronoses and Taloses, and 
I guess fewer ravagers. I mean, I would actually have expected some more. I I don't see ravagers met much at all anymore. The firepower you get normally now comes from scourges and the cabalites in, uh, well, generally in venom. And the scourges but... are there. You're exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And the tailors actually don't have bad shooting, but the scourge are the big ones. The scourge are the big one. It's either with dark lances or haywire, depending on what you your meta is in. Maybe one of each. But the fact that you can pop out fire and it's ridiculously long range just for the dark lances, then go back and power for pain, yeah. you be rolling your hit rolls. Like they're they're so efficient. All right, I'm digging on that. So now here's the time. If you're new here, just listen to the show. We we predict the winners of these, and then we rank ourselves on points. So we each take turns picking who we think is what faction we think is going to win. Uh, and then in the second show that's available only to to the Patreon subscribers, uh, we look back at the events that we talked about and uh, predicted and see how we did. Mm-hmm. So uh, do I pick first this time? You pick first. Uh, so Adam's not here, so he actually he picks Dark Angels, um, Specifically but Dark there Angels. aren't any Dark Angels. No, there so are we can not. To Black Templar for him, I think that'd probably be his his hey, second that's, team choice. That, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> He's gonna go Black Templar. Oh my goodness, I feel like I have to go Necrons here. They are pretty well represented for sure. Yeah, well represented by in an area where I know there are some Necron players, and uh, I think that probably have lined up with each other yep nope that is a strong strong pick i i really want to pick astro militarum but with that many necrons that is one of the predators of the astro militarum i find so that makes me a little worried you know what i'm gonna go with Rukari. i believe they these folks over in sweden they know something they know something. That's why there's so many of them bringing it they've been watching scary's videos been watching scary's videos i believe this is this is the time it's going to happen. Uh, I do think that when you're playing some of those, uh, you know, what we say, fragile, right? And of course, that means different things in different situations to, to different people. But when you're playing some of those fragile armies, your ability to kind of master the movement phase and every time that you move and how you can move matters even more. Yeah. And, you know, knowing some skilled players in the area, again, I think that's um, uh, that's that's a good pick, especially, you know, they're all obviously thinking something too. Could be a fluke, though. Could be, finally, it could be a, a complete fluke. Somebody but, liquidated you know, their... This is this is the hand of destiny on all you Drakari players. There we go. Top one, two, three. <laughs> all three of you. <laughs> they're not getting through the three Custodes players, and they're not getting through the Necron. <laughs> so good luck. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's gonna it's gonna be rough, but you get you guys can do it. You have the tech. You have the power now. I believe it is a mission based game. That's what that's you. That's right. It's the thing that to fall back on here <laughs> is that the game we talk about, of course, unit on unit and how things collide and bang off each other. But there, it is a five turn game where you're scoring points based on your ability to move around the table, claim things, take people off of things, and Few do it as well mm-hmm. as the Jukari. I think it just kind of comes down to if they can if they can get through a couple of if the top lists. Some of the top lists. Or, or, or around them. Yeah, exactly. They can, they can avoid them. You don't know. You know. This, yeah. Jukari are crafty that way. But that can be. That is the uh, the goth event. <laughs> this is the midpoint in the show at the moment where we would uh we would entertain the sponsor we'd say hey go check out the sponsor instead we'll say go check out ourselves we actually already mentioned our patreon a couple of times and that was um like somewhat unintentional but i do want to like we do have a great <laughs> idea i think that for the army list if we if we can uh um find some that we really think would, would be efficient uh and then also the the show where we go back and and look at check our work essentially and we've actually come really close to picking uh winners in every single one of these events turns course, we out stare we're at, actually bad at this you know yeah <laughs> we stare at events all the time so but you, you know, do it every week <laughs> yeah absolutely love it and you know the trends and in, in the trends in different regions is fun to track um but in in on that patreon you also get access to that second show there are no bad tiers every tier is awesome uh some of them get you access to that show the notes from the show um, it is just a way to kind of tip your hat and say that you support us uh, and it means a whole lot to us. Of course, other ways to do that are leaving those five star reviews, leave some comments, share the show, tell people that, that, that it exists. Um, you know, and anywhere you're listening to this after the fact, please give those five star reviews. Um, that helps that helps uh, the algorithms and everything let people know that we exist over here doing this cool thing. Uh, next event we're going to be talking about is the Wet Coast GT. Uh, from Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. I had no idea where it was from the name. Oh, 
It is the far, 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 far west coast of Canada. That's why the wet coast, because it's also like because it's basically. the rainy side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rainy side. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. 170 players in a sixth round event. Uh, shout out to to Tanya, the War Mistress. Absolute oh, she, pillar she of the community. Uh, I I believe so. Both. And hope. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely awesome. I mean, just, I mean, again. She's on a show called Forge the Narrative and insights into the hobby and, and that perspective of um, of the game is phenomenal mm -hmm, and paints sure. just spectacularly. Like, yeah, we could all learn a thing or two from her use of color. So definite shout out. So um, yep, check her out on Instagram if you have not already. What are the other factions we're going to see there? Well, let's see. For the Imperial Superfaction, there are going to be five Sisters of Battle, ten Custodes, two Admech, ten Astro Militarum, six Grey Knights, and seven Imperial Knights, Space Marines, there's eleven Adeptus Astartes, three Dark Angels, six Space Wolves, seven Blood Angels, one Death Watch, five Black Templar, Chaos, there's seven Chaos Space Marines, six T-Suns, nine Death Guard, eight World Eaters, six Demons, and eight Chaos Knights. Xenos, there are sixteen Necrons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are 10%. thirteen Orcs, though. 13 okay. Orcs. Okay. Okay. Seven Tau, three Botan, Hive Mind. There's seven Tyranids, two Genes. They're called. There better be. This is where McDougal's from. Eldari. There are five Drakari and six Eldari, which means the faction podium is Necrons topping it off at 16 again. Orcs in second with 13. People getting excited about the new codex coming. Stardis in third with 11. And then Custodes and Astralitarum tied in a very close fourth with 10. And Death Guard right behind them. This is in Canada, not in Europe. With nine and fifth. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't mention that. And we see that phenomenon quite often is like when there is, you know, supposedly something new coming out for an army, people do kind of take them on whatever it is their current incarnation out on a, on a last mm -hmm. hurrah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's what's happening with orcs? I don't know. I mean, people might be getting excited about it because uh, it is there is a new codex coming. I don't know when, but it is soon. It is one of the ones that has been announced in the next little while, and it does kind of invigorate people. Like, I, know, I know, like, I'm, I'm a faction specialist, so it's like I'm always playing my faction, but when a new codex is coming, which there is apparently one coming this summer for it, I am so stoked oh, for this. And I people just get trying new stuff, you know, like what... Just get ready for it, you know? <laughs> when when you're an orc fan, you're typically assigned as exactly. soon as you become roughly aware of what they are. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm now an orc fan. You subscribe to that. Yep. I like, I'd like the WOG magazine. I would, you know. Yep. <laughs> give me, <laughs> give me all that. Give me a WOG subscription, yeah. Give me a couple of DACAs, you know. <laughs> and then there and there you go. Then you are set for the, you now collect this faction. Oh, you're right. You are you life. are assigned orcs at, at oh not birth. It's about I'd say that's around your teenage years if you find out, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah. Find that out. Slightly rebellious, Slightly but also rebellious. fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, Quite it's it, it's actually a good spread, though. But Orcs in second is crazy. I love seeing that many out there. I didn't know there was that many uh, out west, that's for sure. Like Canada is not a huge Orc fan base from what I've seen, but... Maybe uh, it well, is. Well, KR just mentioned in the chat that it's kind of close to the, the U.S. too. So a bunch that's of true. That that uh, that tournament does actually get a lot of uh, U.S. folks in there too, and they they go down to a couple of the ones in that that side as well. So that makes sense. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. Because nice. that actually that is right. That's that is the orc side of the U.S. too. So maybe that. Okay. You know what? It makes sense. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. I'm sold. There we go. Uh, one of the top players in uh, in attendance is Casser. Uh, great dude. Uh, yep. So there's a caster. Uh, yep. Uh, using the Ultramarines, Apothecary mm -hmm. Biologus, uh, Blade Driven Deep, Calgar, Ventress, uh, six uh, Devastator Centurions with last cannons, four Company Heroes, uh, six uh, and three Eradicators, six, six and three Inceptors. I'm willing to bet that those are mostly plasma. Yeah, two. The two sixes are plasma. The three is Bolter for sure. For sure. Yeah, two by five Scouts. Uh, a Calidus, and then four henchmen there getting those Imperial agents, something cheap to kind of move around the field. This is a beautiful army as well. Yeah, uh, he's I've seen this many times. He's actually a uh, commissioned painter too. So if you like what you see on that army, yeah. I don't know if he's actually looking for more commissions. Sorry, guys, I didn't know if you were actually wanting me to plug that, but you're a good painter, man. So, <laughs> well, stuff looks good. Like I would believe it. Everything you just said, I would believe. And uh, actually, good player too, able to bring. Yep. Um, you, you know, even back when Ultramarines were not 
you know, basically not considered necessarily top tier, still placing very highly on the circuits. And I believe even won like a golden ticket based off of, uh, you know, pre, um, you know, pre deck stuff. So, oh, for sure. And, and Kaz know. is actually a member of the Team Canada WTC team. So it's, he's definitely knows what he's doing. <clears throat> Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I hope I've got my information right there. But anyway, the beautiful army and uh, <laughs> great, great yep. player. Uh, this is so. This does seem like kind of. I mean, I will say this does not seem like necessarily new tech. This seems like consistent, well performing tech. Yeah, it is. It is very much like here I said. It's like the Lenin's list. I don't know if Lenin started using the Eradicators yet because his had the uh, aggressors before. I'm not sure if he had gone to the Eradicators yet. I love the six man eradicators, but with the infiltrated Calgar, I just like the aggressors better since they have melee as well, so they can both threaten both shooting and melee. I get uh, the eradicators just, out there though. That's the thing that that's why you want the eradicators because the satan are just rampant. Obviously, because yeah. you saw how many are at this event, so you need them. The inceptors are great for that too. Like this, this list has four really, really, really good kill pieces. It's. <laughs> it's it's doing well for a reason, Look, right? By the way, I'm not saying that is any slight to the list tech. No, by no. The way, you know, one if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And also, uh, for a lot of folks that are that are, and this is not an example of this individual, but for a lot of folks that are looking to get into a tournament and save some time, look at a performing list and say that one does well. Let me figure out how to do that. Uh, but I will say this one has a lot of those tools that you need. You've got, you know, basically deep striking centurions and um infiltrating eradicators you know putting your putting your stuff exactly where you need it to take out some of those heavy threat things in the are in the in the meta right now so this list is very much mindful of what am i going to be playing in the final rounds of this event and how do i take mm -hmm. home the gold yep and it has the tools to fight all of them too yep. it's it's a so, very good list it's going to be played by a solid player like got to watch out for it. you have to be ready for it. like it, even if this isn't like a list that you're going to see winning a lot of events you put it in the hands of the right player you better be ready <laughs> uh, well yeah i mean think of all the tech pieces here you've got things that can deep strike you've got the things that can come down within three inches of of an opponent and then get you know, picked up that, every turn too yeah that can be a problem on the objectives i mean yep. especially as they're eliminating things that uh, prevent you from screening off you know, yeah, the it gives it gives you the opportunity to kill stuff and make sure they're safe in the fire back or the fight back phase. So like it's the, it gives them a lot of control yeah. over the map. Uh, so with inceptors, I'm sure everyone knows this. They have an ability to come down, you know, just outside of three inches of mm -hmm. uh, of an enemy unit. So if let's just say um, a small unit is trying to box out an objective, it makes it very difficult to do so. Yeah. So you turn yourself kind of into a point scoring machine. And as again, as you grind down your opponent to where they have less and less things on the table, it becomes more difficult for them to box you out from doing all your tricks. And these tricks are great. Yeah. And that is actually one of the problems when you're dealing with a lot of three inch deep strike too. Like you can either choose to zone out the objective to make sure they can't deep strike onto it. But in doing that, you're likely going to put yourself out so that you can just get shot by something else anyway. So you're not safe doing that. So you're either going to give the objective away by them deep striking on it or you're just going to get shot off of it. It's. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a cool comment in chat here. Is there any large events happening in Arizona? Check out BCP. You can go to BCP their website and check out you can basically look for events that are being run in that area now i know arizona is not super close to texas but there is the u.s event uh open series coming up in right outside of dallas not That's that right. long from now so hopefully you get settled in and can come join us over there because uh it's always a blast uh but yeah looking forward to a new tournament scene let us know what you're all playing anybody yeah i mean this is almost like a brand new world out there is, is the, the codex has started to get injected into the game. And as we're seeing the meta, it continues to evolve. Yeah. It is not settled. Like we said earlier before, it is not even close to being set. Like there's still a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot of new codexes coming like towers coming, orcs are coming, custodes are coming. It's just going to keep getting crazier. Cause those are all lists that are going to shake up the meta. Like custodes already kind of shake it up. So when they get a new codex, it'll just twist a little bit more tower, an army that, consistently shake up the meta whenever they get their codex one way or the they, other they really do and i know there's a lot of like hesitation and trepidation i don't want to get too speculative because we talk about what is and mm -hmm. like the cold hard facts of the stats and math and i promise you in a few minutes we will take a respite from that we will take a little <laughs> bit of rest from the cold hard hard stats 
and the math to do our palate cleanser that we do at the end of the of each episode. Um, but as far as like the towel goes, there's a lot of people that are hesitant because of some of the changes that have occurred, you know, in, in the unit sizes and unit descriptions. But I mean, it's still going to be tough like to fight against the towel. <laughs> hey, go look at some of the other war streams. Seeker has been playing it. Towel are still good. They're still scary, yeah. guys. Like, uh, don't well, dismiss them just because the internet says they're bad. That's <laughs> that's like the worst. That's, Dude, the, that's worst. the worst. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely the worst. Oh, here's you know, vehicle spam and breacher towel is the new meta calling it now. Could be right. Riptide's yeah. also very very strong. Um, and well, I guess let me talk into more uh, what we see on the scene mm-hmm. is that anytime there is a really pr- like ever present shooting faction it warps what ends up being what what people consider to be viable yeah in the later rounds of the tournaments provided that shooting stuff is 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 as strong as it is because most armies that only rely on like one phase to do their business have a lot of things that make that really good and compensate for them not being good in the other areas like the fight stuff or whatever yep and so i'm curious to see if that becomes a warping you know a blanket that gets put on the scene. Yeah, it's it's always good to see when these things come out. Like like you're saying, Tau is definitely one of these armies that uh, will. I was going to say tilt people, but you know what? That it is could right. it could it absolutely could tilt people. You have one <laughs> bit of your base, one little bit of your base. In one the wrong bit of base. I can right, see well. that. Well, I guess you're dead. <laughs> yep. That's really like, important. If you're seeing a lot of lists come up with some of the bigger things that you're seeing, like a Redeemer being added in a lot of Space Marine lists, you're seeing Skatash. Is that how you say it? Skatash, Skatath. Whatever the heck the the Forge World uh, Wraith the Wraith Knight, yeah, yeah whatever that, you see, yeah. you've seen that, you see that show up everywhere too. And Tau have really good tools to kill that big stuff very easily, very efficiently. So that is suddenly <laughs> a lot of things in a lot of lists that are just not going to get value anymore, right? So do you change it because of the like you're still good in the other armies? But Tau, even though Tau, right, you know, it's 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 why the meta is in a really good spot right now. You have to make those that's, decisions. That's live and breathe an organism. You know, sometimes yeah. it is just your path to victory that matters. That's right. Like what, that's right. What do you face along the way? You know. Yep. Uh, that's and I think Kara's hit on a good point here in the chat is that a lot of there does become a lot of noise on the internet because change, change. No people like change. You'll hear me say this a lot, but nobody likes to be changed themselves. You know, and so we run into a situation with that. I don't and, like uh, change. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll guy, see. Actually, I, you know, I hope that the Tau stay strong because I know there are a lot of Tau fans out there. Yes. Now, it comes, it's up to us to figure out how to deal with it. And the list we were just looking at, or just looking at, are still looking at right now, has a lot of tools to deal with it because yep. a lot of the things we're talking about, like vehicles or whatever, you get a little bit of a mo- momentum, a little bit of initiative, and you're picking things up. You know, yep. you only need them to fail a couple of invulnerables before, you know, you, you things start to kind of go your way. And then also, no matter what phase is stronger than the other, remember it is an objective-based game. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that the Eldari were wrecking so many people and still doing well today is because they have tools to be everywhere and do everything. Yeah. And they're not. And most Eldari players are switching up their list to to filter towards that area. Yeah, like and you'll it may find take... a lot of those. Those kind of like Eldar lists, especially when you're watching on stream, if you come in like uh, an Eldar game at turn four, turn five, it's like, oh, the Eldari player's table, he's lost. Like, no, he actually won because scored. You killed him, but it doesn't matter. He still scored. <laughs> so maybe we have to go back into that mentality, but we'll yeah. see. We'll see as, the, as things adjust. I know we spent a little bit too much time speculating or whatever, and I apologize, but uh, it's time for us to pick who we think is winning this thing. What faction is taking it down? Uh, Dustin, you, you get first pick this time. Ooh, I do get first pick. You know what? I I have to call. I have to call him out. He's finally he's at a tournament again. He's bringing my faction. I'm taking Gene Steeler Cult. It's, it's happening. G- Gene Steeler Cult. Look, sometimes you got to call your shot, especially when you know the player. Uh, Adam can take Dark Angels this time. That yep. will be the pick. Oh, what am I taking? What am I taking? Uh, I do want to go Necrons again, but there's 16 of them, you know? There's a lot of them. <laughs> 16 Necron players, 13 or I'm I'm going to go Custodes. Custodes, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually building it. some Death Guard models right now. 
Oh, um, really? I realized I did not have enough plague brains in the in the armament flesh that mowers? I wanted. You know, already, you know, I got enough. Flesh okay, I'm just making sure that was a test, Paul. You passed. Good yeah, job. <laughs> You better already have the max. <laughs> I already got the flesh mowers, uh, but no, I was uh, building the plague marines and the options that I want. There's a lot of discussion out there right now. Like, do you go with the fights first plague marines, or you know, do you go with the better shooty plague marines? And uh, well, what did you decide to go with? Or have you not decided yet? I'm building them all. You build them all. Okay. Well, now you can't. Yeah, I'll, I'll worry about it later. Yeah, I'll worry about what the best is later. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. We, we, we will. Fair. We will see. Uh, that's the main part of our show. We're going to jump back to a, what is now we're going to go retro. We're going to have a Fuego or Rapido segment where this is the palate cleanser towards the end of the show where we, um, you know, basically just kind of riff on topics with a time, with a clock, the clock, uh, two minutes per topic. And, um, once we get at the end of that two minutes, we abandon the topic only to ever repeat it. If someone on Patreon demands it. Uh, That's right. No, KR, we changed the rules. We changed we the rules. Changed like them. we actually, yeah, I didn't change. I was, I was out that week. They changed them. Out. <laughs> it was Adam's idea to do it too. Adam changed them. It's his own fault. <laughs> like, and for, from here on out, um, the, I will always pick blood angels on the weekend or the weeks that I can't be here, and, but I always want to be here, but I always got to protect those points too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He knows what he's. He knows what he signed up for. This he is, this knows is rough. what he did. He knows what he did. All, all Watch, she's love. actually going to win this week too. This is going to be crazy. Uh, look, stranger things have happened. It's true. I you think that know. happened to me. I think I picked it up like six points on what week that I was out. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to tune in to the second show uh, to get to figure out how that worked out. Or you could also also check the tournament yourselves. But it's more fun to kind of hang out with us and of course us on that way. We're entertaining to listen uh, to, right? Uh, I well. I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so too. <laughs> so anyway, here's the we're gonna start the clock here in a second. Uh once it starts, we got two minutes to riff on these topics, and then at the end of those two minutes, the topics go away. As I mentioned, never to appear again. This is where we need like post-production scary music. Dun, dun, dun. Sometimes there's a theme to these. Yep. This one will be look the fool in April. So not quite April Fools, but like Foolish things are looking the fool. Let's see. Oh, close enough. Close enough. Next up. Yeah, by the time people are hearing this, it might be April. That's that's true. That's true. What is something that everyone looks stupid doing? Using a straw. You didn't even hesitate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> that was my God, you actually you never use a straw, Paul? You because you, you don't want Oh to no, I didn't it. say I didn't use a straw. I use straws all the time. I'm just like you you like Do you think you did you think you look cool using a straw? Cool, absolutely not. I mean, that's that was just the, the speed in which you reacted to that one. They're like, oh, obviously, <laughs> freaking idiots looking like when they're drinking something with a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, of course. I don't know what what is. No, no, uh, that's so, a good one. That's a good one, though. Um, when you walk out of walk into a room, forget why you were there and have to walk out again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you gotta, you gotta, oh, yeah, okay. And I think there's some comedian a long time ago. It's like you have to do something. You have to like snap your fingers or yeah, yeah, you, you, do, just you have turn around and walk oh, back. Walk you it, what do you do, Paul? What do you do when you actually walk into the place you realize you're not supposed to be in? Yeah, oh. just, oh. <laughs> talk to myself. Yeah, I talk to myself a little bit. I, I, I do the little, the little thinking man. The, oh, oh, oh. And then I, walk, like, oh. <laughs> I just remember something I was supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> I definitely meant to be here, but I forgot something. I gotta go get yeah. that. That's that's good. Uh, for me, uh, something I feel stupid doing. Um, getting off of a bike. Oh yeah, like dismounting a bike. Doesn't matter if you if you do it like naturally when you're stopped trying to get it that way, or you just do the little hop off. Yeah. Just, so you yeah. got to get going fast and then like fling it out from under you, jump like, up and just land uh, down. That's that's the only I have I never think. seen that. See, if somebody did that, I will have to go over to them and make sure that they know that, look, I used to think this, everybody looks stupid doing this. You proved me wrong. Thank you. And then you got to get moment and fling it, fling the bike, fling you know, a good 20 feet. <laughs> Proposing. <laughs> KR. Uh, yeah, I mean... 
Yeah, I can't. There's got to be cool ways to do it. I can't think of any, but on a pirate ship. Pirate ship. Is that what you did? No, I wish. Okay. <laughs> so, if I had to do it all over again, that's right. It would be <laughs> on a pirate ship. On a pirate ship. All right. Next life. Next life. <laughs> next up. What are two items you could buy that would make the cashier most uncomfortable? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, remember this is a this is a PG show. <laughs> uh I mean, it has to be some some personal medication, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> some kind of per- yeah. It has a very only one specific use, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what they're you know what they're doing with REH. You would assume that <clears throat> may or may not involve like where things exit, you know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're trying to be so PG. I love it. <laughs> it's so careful. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of something that's actually the. Because obviously there's there's a lot of things we could say <laughs> that makes that easy. Well, you got a minute and sixteen seconds to do to, to we, got, we got time. That. We, we got time. We see obviously like Paul said, there's a lot of things to do with own bodily functions. You could buy that up. That's always awkward, but I trying to be creative with this. Like if you just buy if you just buy like a knife and a stuffed animal. <laughs> That's it. Nothing else. And like they're having a sale on ski mask or something. They're having a sale on ski mask, yeah. <laughs> but you just can't. It's getting cold up there. You know. <laughs> you don't know. Like, it, it, like the stuffing in those things is actually quite valuable. <laughs> I, I'm not going to repeat what you said, Care, but that's one of the things I was thinking too. <laughs> oh my god! I think we're done with this one. Yeah, we're done with this one. <laughs> <laughs> we're done with this one. Next up. What did you What did you do that was cool when you were a kid, but isn't now? Oh, let's see. Wasn't there like bubble gum chewing tobacco? Was there Sorry, tobacco? I had my southern tobacco. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah. I, I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah, it's like Big League Chew or something that came in a, that in a foil pouch. No, it was it was bubble gum. But it's supposed to, you're supposed to use it as. But I you would I... pull it out. And these strings, and then put it in your mouth like you had. That was big league chewing, you know, yeah. Yeah, chewing tobacco, but you were seven. Huh. <laughs> you I, can't. I don't. I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't be doing it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I do remember that too. I feel like people will still do it though. If they had. If they had the option to have some big league chew. A little retro. A little because retro, it's retro yeah. and cool. Brush you out. That's 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 the word we use now for things that used to be cool but need to still be cool. At least we want them to yep. still be cool. We call them retro. Uh, so you sack. want hacky sack. your kid going to school pulling out his fake tobacco pouch? <laughs> Do I want that? No. Yeah. See, no. that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> that's why it's not retro. It's not retro. I'm, not, I'm just saying there might be some people that might still be into it, you know. But it's definitely not the cool thing right now i i'm thinking of hacky sack actually the more i think about it, was it actually cool back then <laughs> like in some circles it was right hacky, hacky sack. sack yeah people, people probably still play hacky sack really it's hard it is <laughs> it is hard it's it's not an easy, it's, it helps your hand eye coordination you know you get a little exercise it's great I bet, okay if you were good at it here's the thing if you weren't good at it then you did not look cool that's that's <laughs> something that everybody looks stupid doing you know well, actually, what about uh, Red Rover? Is that what it's called? Is that the kids still play that Red Rover? That was they used to be like the playground game. We just run into people. Oh, you had to break through the arms as you. Yeah, run that's the one. I don't know if they still play that. You have kids? Do know. they still play? That? You have boys specifically. I, 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 I do know not boys know. like that. But yeah. recess is not a thing anymore. I don't think. Really? Oh, Devil's well, Stick Story, and yes, that's another one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, next up. What model in 40K never makes its points back right now? Hmm. hmm. Never makes its points back. And you mean like trades? Yeah. If, like or trades if it's 300 up, points, it makes it. Makes its points back. Either like getting you game points, the stuff it kills, the amount of firepower yeah. it, it takes in. Huh. Uh, the stompa. That's sad. You're probably right, but that is that is sad. Ah, uh, now everybody's depressed. Thanks a lot, Paul. <laughs> Especially Val, <laughs> if he's listening to this. 
I did say it specifically thinking of him. Yeah, the toxic green Dorian. You're now you're making me sad because you're right. <laughs> it's just, it's just but you're, the toxic green never gets his points back because he can never get through anything. He can't fit anywhere with his stupid tentacles sticking out. He looks cool. He has the, do the physics, anything. and then also like the ability to target the models definitely helps with that. Like, yeah, it you does. Gotta, you need a specific scenario where, like, the Stompa would do it. I think it's still – you could still play it, but you need a lot of stuff well, to go right. The, the Titanic thing doesn't matter as much anymore, so technically you could actually hide it, right? So, like, we got to think of things that – what's an aircraft that doesn't do anything right now? That's mm-hmm. like – The Manta. The Manta. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So the Manta maybe, but maybe it's going to get some big boost in the, the Tau Codex. <laughs> What is, how many points is a Manta right now? Can you even, can right you even now, actually fill them? I, I mean, you can't fill the Manta in a 2,000-point game. but I want to say it was like 2010, or was that the uh, that was that was the Eldar type? 2,100 points. I was close. I had all the right numbers, just in the wrong order. Yeah, you definitely you got close. You would get some points on the trivia. That's right, yeah. On get, the, on get them points. On get them points. We'll play that again. Dorian Harpy. I actually have gotten some good value of harpies in a Vanguard. It's possible. That is, uh, that's tech though. I don't have time to talk about it because it's time up. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, the most recent instance in a 40k game you played where something should have happened but didn't. Uh, well, I can tell you something that did happen that shouldn't have, but I don't have that, a. That, um... that's, that works, so I'm sure. All right. Yeah, Plague Marines killed a Trajan Valoris with Plague Knives. Just Plague Knives. Just every wow. single one of his wounds knifed him down to nothing. And that should not have happened. I got incredibly lucky. Do they have they have AP on their Plague Knives? I may, may be one. I think it may be one just from, you know, the um bad, uh okay. the Contagion. Oh, right, Contagion. Yeah. Wow, that's uh poor Trajan. No, it was no, like it was already like a uh, the game was a little bit going my way. Uh, but then, you know, it was like, oh, he'll just close it. back in by getting on the subjective kill and he's playing range or whatever. I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to roll the dice and see what happens. And show sure enough, <laughs> it happened. Uh, uh, well, actually, recently I saw a uh, Technomancer kill Void Dragon. That was kind of funny and ironic. But actually, the best one that I had recently, uh, the best one in terms of something that. Should have happened, but didn't. So I had a Shalaxi at three wounds. So this is the four up invuln, five up feel no pain, demon of 450 points. I had it at three wounds. I threw two grenades because I had a saboteur in there. So I threw two grenades. I tank shocked and had the, the, the grinder tank shocked. And it also has its own like grenade when it charges for free. So to put that in perspective, that was 18 dice on fours to do mortals and 10 dice on fives to do mortals. Shalaxi had one wound left. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> on my yeah. on my grenades, all on both grenades total, I did one mortal wound. Wow. <laughs> That's that is unfortunate. Uh Doran here saying that at LVO three rangers survived the horror specs. Oh, that would that would tilt me to no end. That would yeah. tilt me to no end. I it's... mean, <laughs> the horror specs is cheap, so I mean, like in, in your head, you're like, I probably shouldn't kill it because of its point value, but it really should. Well, it's a lot of attacks going into one wound models. Yeah, you know, it's with... like 18 attacks from that stupid thing. It's ridiculous. Wow, that's Warhammer sometimes. That's it why is... we roll the dice. That's what that's makes dice. That's why you always, always roll the dice. Always. Yep. I see all these people like, oh, I'll just take it out. Like, no, roll them. Yeah, we've all yeah, been there to we've where it does, just does not go in our favor. That yeah. is for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's it. That is our show this week. Uh, Adam's out there traveling in the world. Wish him well. Uh, I certainly wish he could be here with us tonight. We miss him deeply. It was great hanging out with him over the course of Adepticon. You know, got to do some of the things we like the most in this world, which is talk about Warhammer and hang out with people playing Warhammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's 
that sounds like a great weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. You check out some of the coverage if you are so inclined. Um, that is, again, that's our show this week. We'll see how our predictions did in our after show. Uh, if you have not already, please go and check out some of the tiers on the Patreon. Um, make sure to do hit that like, share, subscribe button. Y'all have been absolutely awesome in chat. Remember, if you're listening to us after the fact, you can come listen to us live. And we have some absolute great folks hanging out with us. Uh, when they can during the week at Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And good luck out there if you're playing in tournaments this weekend. Uh, don't forget to let us know where you're playing. If you are um, playing somewhere recovered, we want to know how you did and what list you're taking. Something to talk about on the show. Yeah, always reach out to us, guys. We love chatting with you. Thank you for, thank you for hanging out with us, and we will see you all next week. Good night, everybody.